Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this episode of Every Effect in After Effects Explained, we're going to be going over the Blur and Sharpen Video Effects folder. So I've got a couple sample clips open on my timeline just to show you different effects, and also I've got my effects control panel open. Again, if you ever need to rearrange your workspace, you can go to Window, Workspace, you can reset things to the saved layout, and whenever you drag an effect on a clip, it should automatically open the effects control panel for you. So the first effect is the bilateral blur. I'll click and drag that to apply it onto my clip. And one note for all of these tutorials is you'll notice things are just alphabetically organized. They're not organized in any specific way. So what the bilateral blur effect does is it blurs out the kind of surfaces of images while still trying to keep some retention of the edges where there's contrast between dark and light or certain pixels. So you'll see if I turn up the radius and threshold a lot, we kind of get this dreamy, blurry look, but we could still see the shapes and edges of people. So at certain strengths, it could almost make things look a little bit more like a painting. Next up, we have the camera lens blur. This will try to replicate the blur of a real camera lens. So to give you that bokeh blur based on the lights. So if I increase the radius a lot here, you can see instead of just blurring in general, we can kind of get the circular blurs on all the lights and based on the shape of the lens that we choose. So you can choose the shape of the iris. Here's just a here's a triangle. You can see now everything looks like triangle blurred. Here's a square. Now we have like square bokeh. But you can also increase the roundness of any of those. So if I just increase the roundness, it turns into a circle. But you have increasingly multi-sided squares for you to choose from. You also have options to add like highlights onto the, those blurs so the brighter portions can add a bit of brightness to them give your bokeh a bit more light and we kind of get a realistic camera blur rather than just your typical blurs that we're going to go through you also have the blur map section this allows us to only do the bokeh blur based on a, uh, another layer information or another mask so for example if i had let's say a layer like this where it's black and white and i use that as the map layer and I just want to make sure I'm including effects and masks you'll see that it'll blur where I have one color and not the other so in this way you could maybe create a specific mask to blur out you know something closer to the foreground maybe a person and make the background blurry to get some depth of field artificially next up we have camera shake de blur this is a simple kind of more functional rather than creative effect it tries to reduce the shake that happens when, for example, let's say you're walking with your camera and as your foot steps, the camera kind of shakes, adds a little bit of motion blur. It tries to reduce that. Now the result is gonna vary greatly depending on what type of blur and information is in your clip, but it, it's gonna try to sharpen up those areas of blur where it can. It's hard to tell, but you can kind of see when I turn it on and off, it tries to sharpen up certain edges. So it depends on your clip how well it'll work. Next up, we have CC cross blur. So this allows us to blur horizontally on the X axis or vertically on the Y axis. However, not only does it just blur, we can also blend it in certain ways. So you can do the default blend or you can do add or multiply or screen. So you can get different types of blur blending in with the original layer. One checkbox you're gonna see often on some of these upcoming effects is repeat edge pixels. You'll notice that when you blur stuff a lot, it can sometimes fade out the edges and you get that transparency because we're just blurring everything. So if you repeat edge pixels, it'll try to fill those pixels back in, which I find is often useful. So here we get kind of like this cross hatched blur and we can blend it in different cool ways. Next up we have radial blur. This one allows us to blur in a radial fashion, so either circular or in a radial zoom. So you can do zooms and you can choose the amount and quality of that blur. If you're, this is similar to some that are in Photoshop if you're familiar. And we also can choose the center of that blur. So we can make it focused on the left corner. You can even click on the point and choose the exact point. So maybe I want it centered on this umbrella. Again, you can keyframe 
all of these effects that we're talking about. So you can make something go from not blurry to blurry and then back for some sort of impact or emphasis animation. Next up, we have radial fast blur. It's similar to the last one. However, whenever you see these fast blur effects or the fast versions of blur effects, it, this uses your GPU, I believe, to render it. So it renders a little bit faster. However, you notice the quality is a little bit different. Uh, I think the quality doesn't exactly look the same. It actually even gives like a slightly different effect for how it's rendering it. But in this case, we just have a standard zoom and some different options to blend it. So brightest is kind of like only the brightest pixels will r show through. Darkest will make the darker pixels overtake. It's kind of like multiply or it's kind of like darken and light in blending modes. Next up, we have CC Vector Blur. This is a cool one. It allows us to create these unique vector blurs on here. And we can choose different types of blurs. So natural, perpendicular, and it kind of melts things together. Um, maybe even makes them like a painting by default. However, you can also choose like in previous effects, a vector map. So you can apply a certain texture to the blur instead of just the standard. So for example, if I apply the texture of a different layer, let's say this layer right here, which looks like this, you'll see that it's taking those shapes from that layer and in, that's influencing the direction of the blur. So you can take the animation of some water or waves and include it into the texture of this blur. If I was to use just this one here, like the standard black and white gradient ramp, you'll see that it kind of only blurs at the meeting of that gradient, the gray areas in between. So it gives us a different look. So you could choose based on the lightness or just the general alpha shape of it or different color channels to choose what to blur. So this can get really powerful when you bring other layers into the mix to influence the directions of blurs that are happening in the original layer. And you can even animate those other layers to make all type of unique results. Next up, we have Channel Blur. This is one you might be familiar with in Premiere Pro even. And this allows us to blur the red, green, or blue channels. So if I just blur one channel, you'll see we get some uh, color separation, some chromatic aberration going on. And you can blur each of the color channels. So this can give you color fringing happening along the edges. You have the option to do horizontal and vertical or just horizontal or just vertical, which can be cool. And you know, you can imagine if you keyframe things and get these cool animations going on. Next up, we have compound blur. This will blur the layer based on information about the layer. So you can choose which layer we're taking the information from, like previous effects. So if I use this layer as its own blur layer, it'll blur the highlights with a higher strength and the shadows, it won't blur so much. So it gets this, it retains the edges in this interesting blotted way. For example, if I was to use the black and white layer that we've been using as the blur layer, you'll see that it'll only blur the white part of that layer. So you can use this for creative and functional ways. You can imagine just blurring one section of an image like a mask or using other layers itself, it's only really blurring the highlights. Next up, we have directional blur, pretty self-explanatory. It just allows us to blur in a specific direction. So here's just straight up and down. Here's a 45 degree angle, 90. And so you can see you can blur at any angle. You can also animate this if you wanna do some crazy rotating thing. Next, we have fast box blur. This is just another general blur. However, it works kind of like in boxes and you can choose the amount of iterations. So how many times over it blurs, giving you kind of a control on the quality. Here's a low quality blur with just one iteration, but we can increase that and we get a much more blurred out image. You also have options to do horizontal or vertical with this. Here's a one box blur. You can even still see the separation of the two layers almost. But if we do that again and again, it becomes a lot more smooth. So that can be interesting. Sometimes you might only want like a shaky type of blur like this. Next up, we have Gaussian blur named after the mathematician. 
fun fact. And this is kind of like your general go-to blur. Just allows you to blur or not. Just allows you to blur in a nice soft way. So you can increase the blurriness amount. And you can also choose horizontal or vertical. So just your general all-purpose blur in my opinion. Next up we have radial blur. You'll notice that we also had like a CC radial blur earlier. So this is kind of like the same thing, but maybe just in here from older versions. A lot of times you might have redundancy on certain effects because as they've added plugins and features and tools and new capabilities, um, new ways of doing the same thing, but certain old methods are still there sometimes. However, you do have a slightly different interface and controls on this one. So you can use this map here. This one might be familiar if you've used the radial blur tool in Photoshop to choose the center of that blur and also the amount. And you can also choose if it's gonna be a spin or zoom. Next up we have sharpen, pretty standard, just allows you to sharpen the edges up. So if I really crank it up, you can cook the image, but just a little bit of sharpness if you want it. Again, it's not like you need to sharpen all of your clips if you're shooting in good lighting conditions with decent camera equipment. However, you can always have the option to sharpen here. Next up, we have Smart Blur. This is similar to the bilateral blur that I showed you earlier. However, in this case, it doesn't blur the edges as much. It tries to retain the edges even more. Whereas in the bilateral blur, it even blurs the edges a little bit. So you could see if you even turn the mode on to edge only, this is what After Effects is recognizing as the edges of the clip, all those white parts. And it's trying not to blur that, whereas it's blurring the black parts. And lastly, we have Unsharp Mask. This is another effect that uh, utilizes the edge detection, and it tries to sharpen based on that edge detection by increasing the contrast of the pixels and colors around it. So if I increase this a lot, just so you can see, you can see it gets this kind of like embossed or impressed upon look. If I really increase the amount, just so you can see what's going on, you can see the clear edges where it's trying to increase the contrast. So if we just do that a little bit though, you can see it kind of just sharpens up the edges of things a little bit by adding more contrast around them. Stick around for the next tutorials where we're going to continue going over all of the effects and after effects. If you're not subscribed to my channel yet, make sure you subscribe so you stay tuned for all of my new videos. And in the next tutorial, we're going to talk about what the Boris FX Mocha plugin that's now in here does. So I'll see you over the next video. Thank you so much for watching.